All right. So for this one, if you have h of x is equal to 3x minus 2x squared times 5 plus 4x, then this is your f of x, and that's your g of x. So that means, you know, your h prime of x is just going to equal your first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, so that means we have to find f prime of x and g prime of x. Okay, so f prime of x, three times the derivative of x is just one. So minus 2x squared, so 2 times the derivative of x squared, just bring down the 2x to the first. So that means your f prime of x is going to equal 3 minus 4x. So we have that part of it. Let me straighten that up a little bit. Okay, so now we have to find our g prime of x. Okay, so if our g of x is 5 plus 4x, derivative of the constant is automatically going to be 0. Derivative of 4x, yep, it's just going to be 4. Yep, so your g prime of x is just 4. Okay, so now we plug it into that formula. So h prime of x, just using that formula there, is f of x, which is 3x minus 2x squared times g prime of x, which is 4 plus g of x, which is 5x, well, 5 plus 4x, times f prime of x. Oh, f prime of x, 3 minus 4x. Okay. So now we just FOIL method and distribute for those. Distribute that one. You have 12x minus... 8x squared plus, you do the old fashioned FOIL method for this one, 15 plus outer is negative 20x plus your inners plus 12x minus 16x squared. Okay, so your h prime of x is equal to 16 and 8, negative 24 x squared, 20 plus 12 is negative 8, plus 12 is 4, so those two gives you plus 4x, plus 15. Okay, so that would be your product rule. Any questions on that one? Would we have to um, factor that out? Uh, no, if you left it like that, you'd be OK. okay. All right, everyone else is OK with this one? All right. quotient rule and then I'll do the other example.
thing. So for the quotient rule, say derivative with respect to x of f of x divided by g of x equals the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. And, of course, we have a proof. Okay. Let's block that off. Derivative. Oh, of course, g of x can't equal 0. Derivative of f of x. Uh, you got g of x in quotations just because it's squared? Which... Oh, yeah, just because it's squared. Okay, so we know that's going to equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h over g of x plus h minus f of x over g of x all over h. So we want to subtract these, but we need our common denominator. So we have the limit as h approaches 0. Give that a little bit of space. Okay. So to get our common denominator, we multiply this one by g of x over g of x, and multiply this one by g of x plus h over g of x plus h, all over h. Uh -oh. Clean that up a little bit. All right, so that means, move that over some, the limit as h approaches 0, since we have the same denominator here, we can just make that one nice, neat fraction. Okay, so you have g of x times f of x plus h minus f of x times g of x plus h all over g of x times g of x plus h. And instead of putting all of that over h, we can just bring our h there. Right. So here, if we just factor out our g of x, so for this side, we factor, uh oh, clean that up some. g of x, and for this side, we factor out our f of x. Okay, so we have the limit as h approaches 0. And the g of x, we'll just factor that right out. I guess you can bring it there. Times f of x plus h minus f of x. Uh oh, bring that out here. Skip the step. Over g of x. I guess you can bring the whole thing. Times h times f of x. Nope, I guess I skipped a step. Sorry about that, skipped a step. Forgot to add and subtract. So 
we add, subtract. f of x times g of x. I knew I forgot something. So g of x, f of x plus h minus f of x, g of x plus, I'm going to have to erase that because that's in the way. Plus f of x, g of x. minus f of x, g of x plus h, all over x, g of x times g of x plus h times h. Now this is where you factor it out. I knew something didn't look right. So you have to add by, you said f of x and g of x? Yep. Or f of Subtract x. and add f of x and g of x. So I'll put in a little note subtract and add f of x times g of x. Uh oh, sorry about that. Okay, so now we factor out. All right, g of x. And actually we can bring that right out to the front. since it doesn't have an H, it's not going to really mean anything. So you have F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. Well, all over X times G of X. G of X plus H. Plus, here if we factor out our F of X, we have the limit. And we might as well bring the F of X out to the front. That does the same thing. Minus our f of x times the limit as h approaches 0. Once we factor out our f of x, we have g of x plus h, which is negative. So we can actually make that minus, because here it was plus, so it's a minus since that's negative and we want to switch those around. Okay. Okay, so now if we plug in our h equals zero, we have g of x. Well, you actually can't plug in your h equals zero yet because you have to cancel that out. So we have the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x as h approaches 0. And we just bring that denominator up there, divided by the limit of g of x times g of x plus h as h approaches 0. Minus Still have your f of x here. So you have the limit, uh oh, I forgot my g of x, and g of x plus h. g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. As h approaches 0, divided by the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x and g of x plus h. Oops, sorry about that. Oh, that actually should be on the other side of the arrow. So g of x is multiplied by that. Okay. So here, if you notice, we just have our f prime of x. And here, we have our g prime of x. Okay. So you have g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x, all divided by, now if you use direct substitution, your h actually becomes 0, so you have the limit of g of x times g of x, limit of g of x times g of x, so that's where you get your g of x squared. So 
So here, you just use direct substitution. For those two. Okay. So you have your denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. So this is probably the trickier of the proofs. Yes. Yeah, even though you factor out the g of x, that's still the g of x as a limit approaches h equals 0, technically, like the g of x and the f of x. Mm -hmm. When it's pulled out as a constant, but then, you know, h equals 0, there is no h, so you can just write g of x. Yeah, so it would just be g of x. Limit. Yeah. Limit, okay, and then you just... Yeah, so when there is no h, you don't, you can just pull it right out to the front. Right. Yeah, because it winds up being the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then the limit of f of x, and then you also found out the... Yeah, divided by h. Yep, so all we did was get the denominator here and just bring it up top. And then one other thing. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get the subtract and add the f of x multiplied by g of x? Where did that come from? Oh, because we had our f of x plus h here, okay. and we, had our, we just needed an f of x there. But here, we had our f of g of x here, but we needed a minus, I mean, g of x plus h, but we needed a minus g of x. So if, once we had it here, these two wind up being the limit of this plus the limit of that, but we had to switch those around. So we get that minus 1 and factor it out of both of those. That's why that became minus, and we were able to switch those two. Right, I'm just trying to understand, like, where it I feel like it is somewhere, but I just can't find it. What's somewhere? Like the plus or minus stuff of x multiplied by g of x. Mm -hmm. Like I know that you need it, and then it would like cancel out with each other so that you get the function. So I'm just trying to see where. Okay. Yes. Let me know where I'm there. Right there. There? Mm-hmm. Going down to that. This one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how you went from that top one to the, to the bottom. Oh, you mean from this one to this one? Yeah. Oh, all I did was get the, got the H uh -huh. and made this, I guess you could say, times 1 over H. So if you multiply this by 1 over H, then if you have 1 over H over 1, it's still 1 over H. So all we did was get the 1 over H so and brought it up here. Yep, so we get the 1 over h. Exactly. Yep, so let's say for that one, just a quick, so f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, g of x, g of x plus h. So if you brought that out and made it 1 over h, so 1 over h times f of x plus f of x plus h. minus f of x over g of x times g of x plus h. Then 1 over h times that entire numerator will just make that f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h all over g of x times g of x plus h. Does that make sense? So you're not adding anything to it? No. You're just Yep, we're just moving the H from down there to up there. Yeah. All right, so let me see. We're running short on time. I'll do one quick example, and then we'll call that a day. This example will take two minutes. Okay, so let's say... Find the derivative of, let's 
say f of x equals 5x minus 2 over x squared plus 1. Oh, we'll move that over a little bit. There we go. Okay. So we know from the quotient rule, f prime of x is going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. So that means our f prime of x is going to equal, you have your x squared plus 1. Derivative of 5x is just 5 because the x just becomes 1. And that 2 disappears and becomes 0. Minus 5x minus 2 times the derivative of x squared plus 1. Bring that 2 down, you get 2x. Derivative of constant is just zero, so that one disappears. All over x squared plus one squared. Okay. And then when you get there, it's just a matter of distributive property or FOIL method or whichever one you have to do. So f prime of x, once we distribute that five, five x squared plus five, minus, I guess you could say negative 2x, we'll make that minus 10x, negative 2 and negative 2x is positive 4x, clean that up some, all over x squared plus 1 squared, so that means your f prime of x is going to equal 5x squared, Yep, 10x squared. You're right. Which takes that negative 5x squared plus 4x plus 5 all over x squared plus 1 squared. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so really you're just plugging this in. Yep, you can leave it like that. Usually the denominator staying squared is, you just leave it as squared in most cases. All right, so we'll stop there. So because we didn't get into really deep examples on this one, I'll add a couple of days on the product and quotient rule in case you are having trouble with it over the weekend. All right, any questions? All right, and we are...